Hello everyone, and welcome to another Chrono Walkers video. Today we have a spoiler id in the middle of nowhere because ACG at the Days of Beckoning Championship that happened this past weekend announced three new champions for, I guess, Genesis the TCG, which you may be familiar with if you watch our content. Genesis Battle of Champions. Yes, Genesis Battle of Champions. So we're going to take some time to just do a little bit of a primer almost today. If you're not familiar, we did like 10 to 18, say, minute long videos on all the champions that came out in Origins, and they were kind of successful just from an accuracy standpoint. Like, uh, if we want to take a look at the, you know, the strong decks that we saw at Days of Beckoning, uh, we caught a lot of them in our primers. So competitive and new players alike, uh, who want like an introduction to how to build uh, with these decks. Satir Range we caught, Tashir Tigers, uh, Iblis Beckenbreak, uh, Kato Tigers, all the stuff we kind of caught ahead of the, ahead of the curve in those primers. So, uh... Yeah, maybe check those out and maybe pay attention right now. We can pat ourselves on the back. Yes, we can pat ourselves on the back. I guess with that, let's jump into the actual cards that were spoiled. So, Eric, do you want to take us away with Proteus? Proteus, 25 health, 95 aura, although it won't be 95 for very long. <laughs> Zero energy and a forward awareness. We have a Axon Phage. We're in the best color in Genesis. We're in blue. <laughs> yep, and that's a statistically proven yeah. based on the uh, soon-to-be-out meta-analysis. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but stay tuned for that one. We got an awesome meta-analysis yeah. of the Days of Beckoning coming All right, up. All right, so Proteus, a demon. Uh, one of the new demons. Swift, water attack two, cross exert. Immediate vision. At the beginning of the round, you lose one HP. Choose one, gain 10 aura, all right? Your water two becomes water tech three until end of round, or look at the top card of your timeline. You may put it at the bottom of your timeline. Okay, so it's very interesting. You have a lot of options. Yeah. So you can always, always just get some more aura. So as long as, uh, you know, yeah, as long as, as the game goes out, you're going to be going up and up and up aura. So you could theoretically have, you know, that's 250 aura right there for free. Wow. That's great. <laughs> um, you also just have your uh, water attack three whenever you need to take out a three health summon, and you can always just kind of improve your next draws. So that's that's also kind of interesting. So what what do we play with Proteus? How do how do we build this guy? Yeah, I mean, so consistently being able to lose life at the beginning of round immediately starts pulling us into the breaks direction, right? Like, so if you wanted, you could play beck and break. I think we're all in agreement that aura break in this one wouldn't make a lot of sense. I guess you're getting double paid, but when you can just gain 10 aura off Proteus for not doing anything, it seems wiser to just go in the beck and break uh, direction, which we've seen a lot of success with Iblis. Obviously, Iblis has her own special characteristics that make breaks really interesting with her. But yeah, there's one direction you could go with Proteus is like the beck and breaks, swarm tons of guys and get to five counters consistently. I mean, I guess if you do need your extra aura, right, you could bring in some aura breaks. We'll, we'll have to see, but maybe there's like some aura hungry matchups that you need them in. Yeah. So it's definitely a thing that you could do. Yeah, getting double pages. Yeah, I can definitely see the back and breaks is nice. We've seen like with Kasha, her ability to consistently pay life for stuff has allowed her to like be very effective draw break. And then, uh, so having Proteus always losing that life means that you can very consistently uh, trigger those breaks, which is nice. If you don't like going for that kind of direction, I mean, Proteus as a fighter also feels kind of reasonable, right? Because you could just pay a life every turn to just have a swift speed water attack of three. That's that's a solid amount of damage, right? Rain, OTK, uh, Shun hasn't popped out, I think because of the, all the burn decks, but uh, Shun is very much waiting in the wings for, I think, a different meta, because that Shun represents an uh, output of a lot of damage. Um, and then, yeah, Proteus, those dead aura cards late game, if you can keep away, you can just play a life gain card, heck. Um, and then just start converting that life into aura and and or card selection, right? If you just need to find a good card first, you've been, you know, collecting aura for a couple of turns, start 
putting the top card of your timeline on the bottom. And yeah, on the bottom, not uh, in your memories, but on the bottom of your timeline. So you're not even paying a timeline cost there. You still get to burn through as much energy as you like. We don't have an energy reduction, but hey, that hasn't stopped people from building burn decks before. Uh, <laughs> cough, cough, newbie, cough, cough. You have infinite aura, right? For you, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I think I think what like what we're looking at, right, is if you can consistently gain life, say a river knee, mm -hmm. that can offset that life you lose, then you can constantly gain your aura to be able to play, you know, your tsunamis, your electrical storms, other aura cards, maybe electro pheromones or something like that. So there's there's just so many ways to build Proteus. Yeah, and I guess a water damage deck could be a thing, right? Because like unfortunately the water brander is at eight chi. Uh, it's firing croc. Uh, which makes it a little bit tougher to make a consistent game plan of. But there are some cheaper water brands like Makara. Water attack four off your champion at swift speed sounds pretty sweet. Um, and we've got access to Chrono Walker and Warp Strike and all that funny uh, dancing around the battlefield stuff, right? So <laughs> yeah, with that, let's shift over to Harlequin. So I'll take this one. So we got 23 health, 125 aura, and zero energy, energy reduction. We've got forward awareness. And we're in Phage and Chaos, so green, purple. And we've got Swift Fire Attack 1 for Exert. And Trigger Portal. When you resolve a Beckon ability, place a Pox Spreader from your subconscious on a spot adjacent to you, facing the same direction as you, then Exert. Okay, so we don't know what Pox Spreader is, is going to be the first thing. So I guess it just assume it's just like a Swift Damage, one Attack, one Health Summon. And looking at someone like Erica who can spend the Exert and the Nine Aura to make a 2-2. This is kind of free with every Beckon ability, so yes. it's going to be a lot worse. So, I, so yeah, I think 1-1, one, one, that's kind of a good place to start. Then uh, we can kind of uh, go from there and see how you build this Harlequin. And remember, make sure it's Harlequin, not, don't elongate the E so that no one gets you know, sued <laughs> or, or anything like that. Okay, so what can we do with free bodies, Eric? How, how, how can we use these free free summons that we're getting? I mean, we can use it for a lot of things. So we can block pathways, we can attack, we can uh, surround our opponent, trap them in. And if there's any sacrifice energies, because that's always a, a fun archetype in these type of card games, you know, you're getting all these, more, all these summons, you can uh, try to sacrifice them for more value. Maybe there's a sacrifice deck coming in the future, but you're just knowing what we know now, yeah, just swarm the board, hit them in the face. Yeah, I mean, I will say that the, the problem with swarmer decks is that you're using a card from hand, which is why one tsunami or so will blow you out, right? Which is why the first swarm deck that we saw really come to success was Satir, because the extra summons that you're getting on the field don't actually cost you a card in hand, right? Because they're coming off that reinforcement trigger. So you feel a bit happier about just getting more summons onto the board. But yeah, Harlequin is in a similar space, right? You just play like two summons. That, they could be, both be three cheese. And you've got four guys on the field, right? How's that for some turn economy, so to speak? Like you get to go later in the turn because you have so many guys to go first, gumming up the board, all that sweet stuff. Can you get this? Say your opponent wipes them all away with Tsunami. Yeah, that's annoying, but like you spent less aura, and then you're just gonna flood the board even more. Like every, you're doubling your amount of summons that you get. I think this could create like the really big like weenie type of swarm archetype that we we've seen in other card games that like hasn't really um, been that great in uh, in Genesis because of how easy it is to like wipe away. Yeah, the absolutely. Uh, when we're summoning our own summons, right? The normal summoner first turn is just duck to the right or left, and then summon something to your right or left. Uh, because you don't want to go forward to protect it from, you know, someone running up, you know, AoEing or stuff. I'm happy to put two one ones in front of me. <laughs> like, if they want to spend a card and some resources or, like, an entire turn of one of their better summons to come up and run and hit one of my one ones, and then my actual real summons are in a good position to, like, uh, flank around... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So like there's a little bit of like, you know, it's like it's like how Cato can protect This is like I don't even care about them So I'm, I'll shove them in front and either they get to run up or or whatever, right? So there's a little bit of sweetness there <laughs> And and one thing we are missing of course is what kind of damage Pox, Pox Spreader is doing But if Pox Spreader is doing a damage that we have a brander for say electric or uh, fire Then we could go into that branding uh, deck type yeah, and both of the branders for these colors are sweet, right? Picornavirus and Lava Rider, both of them are awesome. Like, I'm happy to play either of those. Mm -hmm. I guess some synergy cards, which haven't been seen in play, but could 
see play with Harlequin, uh, first one's going to be move together. So this is a movement technique that hasn't really seen play because I think the, the texture of it is a little rough. So it's got that left, right, and back awareness. And if you got a summon next to you, it's kind of like shift around, move. It's like Chrono Walker style, like, you know, we can move over and dodge something. But the problem is, is if you're playing summons, you don't want to keep your summons near you. you. You need your summons to go either protect you by engaging with the enemy or just, yeah, just engage with what's happening on the board. So keeping a summon next to you isn't the best methodology for, for a summoner, right? You need, to, you need them to do stuff. You know what? I'm pretty cool with keeping a 1-1 one -one next to me just for a a quick get out of jail because it's free because it doesn't do that much keeping just one back of like the five six seven that you summon over the course of a game seems pretty freaking sweet uh so maybe move together is a is one synergy but i think there's an even better synergy that both eric and i are excited about so i'll let him take this one away yeah and of course we have uh moving dodging things it's all very nice but you know what's better than that? Drawing cards. Oh, boy. So we have repurpose. So if you're getting a free summon every time you summon something, then you don't care about it. It's free. It's whatever. You just throw it away and you get an actual card out of it. That's crazy. Yeah, repurpose, I think. You're going to find new life, I think, with Harlequin. Absolutely. Like, build your own Nubia for just 11 aura. I know we're starting on a little bit lower aura, like 125 versus Nubia 150. But we're getting a lot of free value for that aura. If we think about what a 1-1 one -one is worth, right? Like, how, how much aura would that be worth? Like, 4 or 5? So, if you get 5 summons over the course of the game, you've got your aura back, effectively. And then, yeah, with a repurpose, start eating them and getting cards that you actually want. It's great. Really, really, really sick card, repurpose. But never found a place for it. Harlequin, oh boy. Harlequin likes this one, I think. <laughs> uh, I think we did find a place for it, but it was in Sarah. So, Sarah has no place in... Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we've been treating Pox Spreader as a, as a swift damage 1-1. One, one. Players, what do you think Pox Spreader says? I guess to cap off Harlequin, Pox Spreader as a name feels interesting, right? It Like it's leaning a specific direction. So what, yeah, people watching, just write down in the comics what do you think Pox Spreader does. And future leaguers, if you think you know what it is, just remember that everything can change, right? Malefic Impalement did, Emergent Worm did. Emergent Worm did a lot. And if you win, if you get it right, then congrats, you got it right. All right, let's take it to our next one, Cutaneous. So the toolbox or consistency champion. I'm terrified of this champion. Eric, why don't you take us away through the breakdown? Um, I'm also kind of wary, wary of this champion as well. So let's let's go through it. 21 health, 90 aura, one energy, left, right, forward awareness. We got Bellum Phage, all right, Cutaneous. Swift Electric 3 exert. So a 3 damage attack without awareness. We've seen that on two other champions. Immediate Prepared. At the beginning of the first round, you may reveal up the two cards from your thoughts and put them into your forethoughts. If you do, then for each card revealed this way, you may take a card from your forethoughts with the same chi, reveal it, and put it into your thoughts. Oh, jeepers. All right, so this is very interesting. Without that like second ability, like you're just like the Electric 3 with the awareness, right? So you have to really take advantage of that of that second ability, the prepared ability. But if you can, like, what can you do with it? What kind of what kind of cards are you gonna take out of your forethought that are gonna really change the game up? So yeah, we call it the consistency champion. This is why this guy scares me. So there are a couple of cards, mostly I mean enchantments, right? We've seen like Iblis playing 15 beck and breaks to guarantee having one on turn one, right? Um, Cutaneous just needs to have. Uh, the appropriate chi in hand and cutaneous can just uh, grab what whatever cutaneous wants from from the sideboard so a card that is definitely strong enough to see constructive play but hasn't yet is rapier precision it's hard because of the seven chi so it's hard to put a lot of them in your deck you have to as an action speed attach it to yourself um and then it's, it's kind of expensive and doesn't really do that much if you draw it later in the game. So it's, it can be kind of tough to justify. But if you can guarantee you get that card, right, through precision on the first turn of the game uh, and play it, then you're guaranteeing that you're doing, every time you attack, one more damage. Another, like, five, six, seven damage over the course of the game. Every time you attack. The problem with Raper's position is that it's seven chi, and there really isn't a strong seven chi card in Bellum that really sees play in decks. Um, if you're, if you're screaming at the screen right now about Bolt Shot, yes, that's, that, this is sarcasm and that's what I was referring to. Yeah. Yeah. So Bolt Shot, 
we know there's a limited number of bolt shots you're going to be pl playing over the course of a game. Rapier position being able to pay as a trigger two cards off the top of our deck with our energy reduction to do one more damage off our cards. I mean, that is that is very strong. Like bolt shots dealing five damage. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's that's okay. That's reasonable. Increase all your damage you deal. Any attack ability, yeah. Oh, wow, that's... Wait, whoa, that's actually way stronger than I thought. I thought it was just your basic attack, but, like, any attack ability that you're doing, you're increasing it by one? Yeah, wow. Yeah. Did you know that Cutaneous's, uh Swift is an electric attack? Were you aware? Uh, yeah. It just works to get you to four attack off your basic attack just from the start of the game, right? And look at our awareness. Like, there's some scary stuff here. Um... Yeah, you know, always having that extra four attack and then just adding one for all the attacks that you, you draw for the rest of the game. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's huge. That's going to be huge. I guess other other silver bullets, right? There's got to be another enchantment you're thinking of, Eric. Oh, of course. So, personally for me, the World Championship, I was shocked that there's only two Tashirs, but Tashir is a very strong champion that basically just loses to Dense Fog. Yeah. You know, like you play Dense Fog, if you can guarantee Dense Fog first term against Tashir, um, they can't move at all, right? They're just stuck. They can't, they can't dive in juke. They can't, you know, move. They can rotate, I guess, but they can't like do a lot of things. And so, you know, one issue Dense Fog is that you have to put multiple in your deck, but only the first one is useful. But you with continuous, you just need to put one in your four thoughts, and that's it. And then you shut down Tashir for the every time you played against it. And while that's that that kind of like shut down like silver bullet is like kind of the only one I can think of right now. As we go along, there's going to be more. Yes, like as the game develops. Exactly, and so every time something comes out in you know Jolara or Bellum or Phage, Cutaneous can slot one in the deck, so almost no uh, opportunity cost, and just have it at all the time. And um, also, one thing I would like to point out is like. You might think like, oh no, like they're not guaranteed to have it. They uh, they because you have to have the right chi for it, which is true. But you would build your cutaneous deck around that. Absolutely. So you would have a very even distribution. You would look at your four thoughts and then you would kind of compare, you know, the the chi values in your four thoughts that you want to hit versus the chi values in your deck, and you would adjust those numbers to be able to consistently get an even a spread of chi. It's going to be a, a very interesting deck building. Uh, champion. Now, uh, keeping it as the beginning of the first round, that does mean you're operating off five cards. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of math here. Um, but I think because we know how strong Bolt Shot is, that's a seven chi. Seven chi cards in Cutaneous are going to be almost free includes. And then who knows, like maybe if you're leaning into the seven chi slot, maybe there might be some three chis that are more specific that, you know, could be brought in. Who knows? So that's actually a really interesting point. So I know for me and most people, right, you know, first turn of the game, you draw six. This one, you have to draw five, yeah. do the prepared, and then draw one. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it, it, also, it, it does is, mitigate a bit. This, yeah. this forces you to build a forethoughts too, right? Yes, yeah, force, forces uh, new players, I guess, to, to build a forethoughts, because otherwise you're, you're leaving value on the table. Just to rattle off some, like, reactive cards that are also strong, because you know, we're all familiar with these, like, reactive, high chi specific cards that we want our high chis to be threats realistically, or, like, you know, board clears slash kill the opponent, like, bolt shot. Um, so there's a bunch which haven't seen as much play, however... Um, with the advent of Cutaneous, you, like, if there's cards that you would only draw, want to draw one of each game, you can just keep a pop copy in your th forethoughts. So that's going to be cards like, uh, like Sudden Vengeance, a Calculated Assault, Rope Tornado. I mean, yeah, you could build a Calculated Assault deck with Cutaneous that just keeps, uh, I mean, a couple of copies of, of Calculated Assault in the main deck, but just focus on the combo plan and make sure that you can always pull a Calculated Assault from its, uh forethoughts in the first game rapier decision is good because it adds an extra stack oh yeah also to the stack and then we see for for phage we have traumatophobia which is an interesting card that hasn't seen any play because it's very specific but you know if your opponent you know your opponent's going to be playing on a summons like say they're a harlequin deck <laughs> <laughs> you get that that traumatophobia out put it on them and now uh now all those pox spreaders that they're summoning are liabilities 
Yeah. Or perhaps you'd like to grab an electrical storm against an angel deck. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Or, like, uh, I mean, terrible memories. Electro pheromones is a house of a a card. Maybe Harlequin uh, plays electro pheromones, actually. Um, Because it's like, even though it's not a summon, it does a cool board clear and then gets you a whole bunch of summons, even if, like, some of your stuff died. Um, but yeah, tra- uh, traumatophobia, like there's, there's some sweet stuff here with cutaneous in terms of just having a, yeah, a, a four thoughts that are a build around, um, any final thoughts about cutaneous, I guess, to wrap up this video, Eric? Yeah. I mean, I guess my final thought is I've been kind of down on this champion. Now that it's weak, I think it's going to be strong, but like variability variety is the spice of life and yeah. our game, we play card games because uh, they give us different experiences every game. And uh, cutaneous, I feel like it's going to be... You're going to have, like, your rapier your precision and maybe one other card. You can If you can get that, like, 80% of your games, turn one. All your games are going to, like, kind of boil down to the same kind of actions that you take every time. And uh, that's going to get kind of grating, right? Yeah, I know. So that that's why I'm a little disappointed, or not not disappointed, but like not not the biggest fan of this type of style, where that, that makes things like so hyper consistent. Cutaneous, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, variance is the lifeblood of TCGs, and cutaneous is kind of like, ha, what it, what is variance? Like, there's a little bit of mitigating factor, in fact, that you have to have in your first five cards, but subtracting that, um. Yeah, there's a there's a consistency of game plan and a and a consistency of silver bullet that I'm not a fan of. Like where anyone who's familiar with magic and companions and how it just basically progressed to a soft ban on all but two and then hard bans on uh on those two. I believe every companion is either soft banned or banned in modern at this point. Um, so, like, we've seen what happens when you remove variants from the game, from TCGs. Um, so I'm a little worried about Cutaneous. I feel like can only be, it can only be, like, not good enough so that it doesn't see any play. Or, like, a cons- uh, competitive, hyper-focused, like, destroy your opponent's build. I hope it's not. Uh, I-, I want to be wrong about this. But, yeah, this one does scare me more than other cards. That being said, I'm really excited about invasions. Like some of these uh, champions look really cruel, cool, specifically Proteus and Harlequin. I guess they look cruel and cool. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like I'm, uh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, and when we uh, when we get all of our cards out for invasions, we're gonna be making our uh, primers for these uh, and all the other champions to come out with them too. And that'll be exciting. Yeah, but I hope you enjoyed our mini little sneak peek into what the future of Genesis can hold just with the current card pool, not even going into the far future uh, with, like, the full set. Um, I'm, I'm overall excited. Like, yes, not to, like, it was a little bit of a downer there, but, like, these are some sweet champions. A little bit afraid of Cutaneous, but, like, Proteus and Harlequin, just really, really fun interesting stuff there in terms of building around. I love swarm decks. I love eating my own dudes. So Harlequin repurpose, whether it's good or not, I'm definitely going to be building one of those. I just want to like kill my own uh, people for uh, profit and um, cards. So... (laughs) We'll call Harlequin the the capitalist uh, (laughs) Harlequin is the bourgeoisie. Uh, <laughs> 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 all right well hope you enjoyed that and yeah let us know what you think pox spreader is in the comments like share and subscribe and uh we'll see you around we'll see you in the arena we'll see you in the arena oh it's such a good way to end the video we should just do that in fact i would edit this and put that as the thing yeah you should we'll see you in the arena <laughs>